Hey friend, I'm Glenn Thomas, and in this video, I wanna talk with you about how do we make sure that our dynamic range, the, the ebbs and flow of the song are really working with our mixes to build the best song that we can. In this case, what I'm working on is a rock song in Ableton, and I wanna show you how I take my verses, which are kind of smaller and more, uh, well, just smaller in sound, right? We want them to be smaller and narrower so that we can make the choruses bigger and wider. So I wanna show you how I go about doing that. So jumping inside Ableton here, what you'll see is that I've got a, a very, very simple mix. This is just a rock song. We got drums, we got bass, we got two guitars panned hard left and right. And then we've got a little bit of a synth and a vocal. And again, this is a rough, uh, kind of rough out, if you will. It's mixed fairly well. There's a lot of fine tuning. Definitely needs some mastering and things like that. But it's in a pretty good place. I'm pretty pleased with where it's at. And what you'll hear, well, let me just play it from the start and we can uh, get into this song. Pretty simple and straightforward on this. The truth is and then it's into the verse from there. So the first thing that I wanna make mention of, how do we make sure that our choruses are really exploding out of these speakers? Well, one of the ways that I like to do it is by reducing the volume, or maybe I should say reducing the density of the verse sections. So what you'll notice here is, again, drums, bass, and then two guitar tracks and a synth. You'll notice for this verse, I've dropped out both guitars, they're gone. And then I've also disabled, if you hit the zero key in Ableton, it disables a track. So even though it's there, I've just disabled that. So again, in this verse, we've dropped it down to just drum, bass, and vocal. And it sounds like this. So you get this nice dynamic change. The truth is, it's useless to tell you how I feel. Yep, that's great. And on that uh, vocal there, you'll notice definitely got some overdrive and I really enjoy putting overdrive on these vocals for a rock song, song like this. It helps to just give it that grit and edginess. Okay, so again, the first thing that we can take away is that you can remove instruments to make your verses smaller so that your choruses are bigger. So if we come out of this verse, it sounds like this. You say you love me, and I'm worth Building. Great. Again, the dynamics there just help to really build that out. So the first thing that we can take away, remove some instruments. The second thing that we can take away is what I like to do is just play with the stereo field. So what you'll notice here is one, I've taken away uh, these one of the guitars. It's disabled here, it's still in here, but I've disabled it. Initially I'd worked with just turning it down. You can see in the waveform that's a little bit quieter, but then I decided, you know what, better still, would be to actually take and uh, remove it, go down to one guitar, but not only that, if we look at my automation here, or actually, let's look at this group. This is a guitar group. Again, I'm not very good at naming things, but I have colors. The red, the blue, the green, the purple, the yellow, all mean something to me. And so uh, this group here, the green group is guitars, and you'll notice that I have a mono a utility. So this is just the preset that you can pull up from within Ableton uh, for the utility plugin that makes it mono. So it's mono down here. So you'll notice that I've automated turning on this mono for the guitar tracks. So we go from two panned out hard panned guitars down to one guitar, which is still panned to the right, but then I use the mono uh, instance there to just bring it to the center. So take a listen to what that sounds like. Comes down narrow. One guitar in the right in the middle. And that really ends up being a pretty good way. That really does end up being a pretty good way to bring down that sound field well, in this case, I want it to be a little bit bigger than the first verse, and so that's what I did. And then on this as well, the third thing that we'll get into here in a little bit is um, is working with 
uh, reverbs and delays and things like that. But I also did want to mention, I did actually do the same thing uh, for this. Yeah, if we show automation here, I did the same thing for the drums. I've got uh, not quite a mono, but I did bring down the stereo field here. You can see far over. Oh, you can't see that. Uh, let's see. Can I bring that over? You know what? I'm going to just have to move my head for a second here. Okay, so what you'll see here uh, under my face is that on this drum track, I went ahead and applied the utility plugin, but in this case, rather than making it full mono, when it comes on, when it comes on, uh, the mono is not checked, but the width is brought down. So even my drums get narrower. So everything just kind of comes down into a little bit of narrowness there. So that Yep, and then when we get to the end of the uh, verse here Blow it out Yeah So again, you can hear that by taking that stereo field and then bringing it down, it gives it somewhere to go when we are ready to uh, move into that chorus there. And then the final thing here uh, that I haven't actually applied yet, but I want to talk to you about this, the third thing here for applying uh, to get nice dynamics between sections is with your uh, reverbs and delays and things like that. So what I like to do is I like to automate if I show the automation lane here, I like to automate the wet, dry, or how much reverb is on a section. So again, what I would do in this instance is we know that right here in the first verse, so we'll get this back down here, what you'll see over here in the first uh, verse section is that it's disabled, the synth is. But then in the second section here, what I'd like to do is take it and bring it so that we have less less uh, of the reverb happening. And by doing so, I'm hoping that we will have a nice expanding sound when that reverb comes in. Let's take a listen to how this sounds. Turn off automation. Okay, so it sounds like that. I don't know, that actually may have gone the other way. No, I think it did help. So what you can hear is when this transitions here into that next section, uh, let's solo that out so we can hear it. It gets bigger because we've got this bigger amount of uh, reverb going on. Smaller reverb. Yeah, that's definitely good. What I may do is add a little bit more time to that. So we'll go 3000 milliseconds, which is three seconds. Smaller. Bigger. I think I even may want to go 4000, four seconds of reverb decay. Longer, bigger. Yeah, there we go. Yep, that's good. Now, the final thing I want to do for this as well, and I could do it just on the, the fader here, if you will, but I want to uh, put in a utility again, and uh, I'm going to modulate, or automate rather, just a little bit of gain on this as well. So we'll show gain automation right there, and then in this final chorus, uh, it's a double chorus here, we're just going to bump this guy up. Maybe like 3 dB. Now let's go 2 dB and see what happens. Take that out of solo. Let's take a listen here. Yeah, you can actually hear it on the outside of the speakers there. And just for good measure, let's implement that same technique we started with, uh, or on the second verse, with our, our width here. And so we'll show the automation for our width and we'll do the same thing here. So in this uh, verse, we're gonna bring it down. 
to zero, make it mono. And then for this chorus, we're going to bring it up. Let's make it even wider. Let's go 110%. 115, 109, 109. So we'll go even wider coming into this final set of uh, choruses. You know what? And actually what we'll do is we'll go eh, 100, 97, good enough. And then for the final chorus, then we can, uh, we can take it from there. So that should be about here. Is that where that's at? Yeah, so right in there. So then on this one, we'll take it just a little bit more up to about 109. So we'll get even wider for this last chorus. Let's take a listen to what this sounds like. Turn off automation and go. It really does a nice thing there. Overall, I feel very pleased with the way that we went about that. Again, three ways to get a little bit more of a pop uh, from your choruses is by actually reducing uh, the dynamics of the sections preceding it so that what you do have seems even bigger still. So hopefully this was helpful for you. If it was, go ahead and hit like on this video. If you have any comments about this mix or maybe a different way that you do this, throw that in the comments below. So glad that you uh, joined me for this video and uh, hopefully I will see you on the next one.